Hi all, Steve from CME here. We're looking at one of the better known EVOs in the EVO community, Silver EVO 9. Some of you will know it. It has basically a bunch of bolt-ons, uh, no, no mods to the, the stock block yet, so still standard rods and pistons and so on. But uh, it's got some head work, it's got Kelford TX272 TX cams, so the 11mm cams. It's got SME version 4 manifold, GT pump 712 turbo, uh, plasma man intercooler, and custom pipe work and things like that. We've just fitted an ECU package to it, so it's got a Link G4X plug-in ECU with uh, a fair few sensors. So we've got oil pressure, oil temperature, fuel pressure for fuel pressure modeling. We've got ethanol sensor, which obviously measures ethanol content, but also gives us a fuel temperature reading. Uh, we've obviously got intake air temp, barrow sensor, that sort of stuff that a Link ECU would need. We've done a MAF delete as well, so there's no restriction on the intake whether that uh, makes any difference to these power levels, debatable. So yeah, pretty clean car. Um, we're pushing it pretty hard. So it's making uh, 342 kilowatts on high boost, but you can see on both uh, high and low, we're torque limiting. That's why we've got virtually a flat torque curve. So we're torque limiting even the higher boost, and that's why we've got a very linear power curve. So we're basically from here on, we're sort of 475 to 480 Newton meters all the way through to the end. I think we're 474.5 right as we hit the limiter. Um, so yeah, pretty uh, high power there, 342.6, um, 319 on the lower boost. So basically we're pulling 10% out of it on the lower boost one, similar thing, still torque limited. Uh, we've got a little bit higher here than we'd like because we're only doing that by controlling boost and we're basically on wastegate boost. So if we come over here, we can see this is our boost curve. Uh, we're a wastegate boost through here, then we just ramp it up a bit to keep that torque constant. And basically the high boost does the same thing, bit of a spike, get it going, holds that torque, and then we ramp it up at the end just to keep the torque plateauing. Um, this one here is our injector duty cycle. So we can see that we've got plenty of injector. We're at just over 70%, I think here, 72 or something like that. Uh, the top one is our fuel pressure. We had some fuel pressure issues with this car and it showed up with the sensor. So fix that up with the new reg and the way that was connected up. Uh, so we're sitting at uh, 410 kPa differential pressure. Uh, our, our reading here is, is a 10 kPa resolution. So that's basically flat line across the top. Uh, the bottom one here is our AFRs. We've got two readings here that we're overlaying over the top of each other for one run and we're using Lambda 2 and Lambda MW. Lambda MW is a single channel wideband, so separate controller to our four channel. The, we're using channel number two and the Lambda MW. You can see they're pretty much the same. The M and W is the tailpipe sensor and the other one is in the front. The, the Lambda 1 to 4 is actually a M and W as well, but uh, it's a four channel, we just haven't labeled it as MW. Uh, so basically we use that as a check to show that we haven't got a problem with a sensor. You know, we're completely separate uh, controllers and sensors and so on. So if we see suddenly a 10% variation or something like that, or some sudden variation, we know there's a problem with a sensor somewhere. So that's just there to keep, a, keep an eye on things. Uh, as you can see, our torque pretty flat and our power pretty linear. Uh, it's probably a bit pushed on, um, on this thing for a stock block, but um, I think there's a 2.2 or something in the works. Um, but um, there's a high and low as well, so obviously the low is gonna last a little bit longer than the high. Yeah, not a bad thing. 